All right, cool. Um, so uh, welcome everyone. Today we are looking at uh, buy categories. Um, and obviously this is within, you know, this is within the, the seminar on defining the buy category of Landau Ginsburg models. So in order to do that, we need to know what a buy category is. Um, so the main reference for this talk is uh, Borsos Handbook of Category uh, Categorical Algebra, Volume One, uh, Chapter Seven, um, and that'll be referenced in in the notes, which I'll uh, get distributed after the talk. Um, so to begin, let's let's look at a category. Uh, so just a reminder on on what a category is. So a category. Uh, a category C consists of uh, objects. So we'll call them A, B, C, et cetera, uh, and morphisms. All right. Um, so we'll, we'll denote that like this using an arrow between, between objects as usual. Uh, and we'll denote the set of morphisms, so the collection of morphisms from, from an object A to an object B, uh, by by this by this thing here, All right? Um, now this data for a category is uh, subject to some conditions, right? So we've got an identity morphism, which 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 must satisfy a certain property. So uh, we have the identity, right? Uh, so in the set of morphisms from A to itself, we have a, a special morphism, uh, which we'll always denote like this. Uh, which satisfies these equations for all, uh, oops, no, not that one. <laughs> for all F and G where, where, that, where those equations make sense. Um, and uh, we also have this associativity condition on composition. Uh, so that is that if we compose morphisms like this, so we compose H with G and then uh, that composition with F, then that's the same thing as first composing F and H and then composing with G. All right. Um, now we can view these these conditions on on the data of the category uh, in a slightly different way using using the diagrams on on the next board. Um, so. Uh, the first thing we maybe want to observe is that this this identity object uh, we can we can think about the identity object as being being expressed or being identified using a morphism of sets right from from a singleton set uh, into the set of morphisms from a to itself right uh, where we say that ID of a is just the image of that singleton uh, under this morphism. Um, and then what that, that lets us do is if we look uh, onto the onto the second board here, <clears throat> is this all going to come along? Yep. Um, so if we look at diagrams uh, one and two here on, on this board, uh, then they're expressing the same idea as our conditions on the on the identity that I wrote on the previous board, right? So um, if we if we continue if we start over here, right? Uh, and then we we go to this side using using this isomorphism of sets, um, and then we we introduce the identity using using this morphism U A here, right? Uh, and then we can then we compose that this diagram commutes, right? We get back the morphism F that we that we started it with over here, right? Um, and then this other diagram is just saying the same thing, but for composing on the other side of the identity morphism. Um, now, we can also do the same thing with the associativity axiom on the category, right? Um, and we can express that using this diagram here. Uh, and here we're just using C, A, B, oops, sorry, C, B, C, D is uh, composition, right, um, from, viewed as a function like this, right? All 
Okay, and and what we're asserting instead of saying instead of stating the axiom as we did before, right? We're just saying that this diagram commutes, right? That we're going around the diagram uh, along the right arm of the diagram is the same as going around the diagram along the left arm of the diagram, right? Um, okay, are there any questions about translating that definition that definition of categories to, into uh, these diagrams? Okay, great. Um, Okay, so we'll now move over to the third board. Um, and now we're going to define, define on our path to defining by categories, we're de going to define a two category, right? So a two category is roughly speaking, uh, a category in which we also have higher order morphisms between the morphisms of objects, right? And everything sort of works, right? Um, so to be more precise, uh, a two category, we're not looking at that board yet. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me, uh, I better move the orb over as well, hey. Yep. Sorry, could you quickly explain the notation for the composition operator? Like, the, is there some subscript happening? Oh, uh, yes, sorry. Um, I'll, I'll do it at the top of this board, yeah. Um, so maybe let's get rid of this. Uh, so we're saying that, that C, A, B, C, right, uh, is is the composition function from uh, these sets of morphisms. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Um, okay, so, uh, so uh, a two category and we'll also call it C um, is a category uh, in which in which every set of morphisms is also a category. Right, and we have the following conditions. Um, so one, uh, see the composition functor, so, sorry, the composition uh, map is a functor for all uh, morphisms, sorry, for all objects A, B, uh, and C. Um, uh, and then so is the map UA, which identifies the identity. Sorry, just to be clear, it's like looking at it, uh, that means it's a, for one, it's a functor between the, pr like. Yeah, so what, so you're saying what is this thing is a category? Yeah, and also for the, yep. for, for the for the first one. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. So so to regard this, so let's look up here, right? So to regard this whole thing as a category, right? So its objects are are pairs of uh are pairs where the first thing is an object of this category and the second thing is a object of this category, and its morphisms. Uh, are also pairs, right? Where it acts sort of coordinate-wise on the on the objects, right? So, um, is that is that clear, or would you like me to go into uh, some yeah, more that detail? Is, I guess yeah. maybe a reminder of like, all right, those two, you're you're taking the Cartesian products of two categories to get the a category. Could you remind mm -hmm. me like what's the what are the two categories each? Like, what's the category C A B? Um, so this category. Here is the category of morphisms from from A to B, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the category of morphisms from B to C. And then we we have a functor which composes these this pair of morphisms and and spits out a single morphism from A to C. Yes. So far, there's right. no 
there's no specific content to this category, C A B. It's just mean? our category. What does that mean? Oh yeah. right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah there's I, no there's yeah. no example here or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um oh and then this thing you said what is what is this thing as a fun uh, as a category? So this is uh the category uh with one with one object and one morphism. Uh, I also just realized that in the premise of this definition you said like it's a hypothesis that C A B is some category. So Yep, yep. That's yep. not like a like a by default defined thing. Uh no, it's part of part of what it means to yeah, be a true category. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm on the same page now. Cool. Um okay. So so both of these things, both of both of these maps are functors. So before they were morphisms of sets, now they're morphisms of categories. Uh, and our third condition is that um uh the diagrams uh one, two, and three on the previous board, uh, commute as diagrams of categories. Okay. Um, and uh, cool. So we call the uh, so so we call morphisms between objects. So uh, maybe I'll say it like this. So we call. Sorry, you said uh, regard these diagrams as something as diagrams of categories. Sorry, what yep. did you say about them? Yeah, so so if if we're defining a, a two category, then we want we want these diagrams uh, on the previous board. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll walk over. So yeah, we want these diagrams on 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 this board here to to commute as diagrams of categories, right? So if we're talking about uh, this curly C as a two category, um, you know these are all these are all functors. Uh, so is so is this thing, and obviously this is still an isomorphism uh, of categories. Um, so so we want these to not only commute as diagrams of of sets. Say if all our if our if all our morphism categories are small categories. We want them not only to commute as diagrams of sets, but also as diagrams of categories. Okay, so to say they commute normally is to say that those uh, morphisms between those sets, when you compose them, you get the same morphism from, I'm looking at the bottom diagram, from the top left to the bottom right. Yep. Um, and Right, I, I'm trying to understand what what's what's additional there. Like, w w what's a way in which this could com commute as a diagram of sets and not as a diagram of categories? Uh, well, it needs to keep the the morphisms. It needs to work on morphisms in the same way, right? These these functors. So when when you apply them to to morphisms, they need to. Uh, no matter which way you go around the diagram, you need to get the same morphism coming out the the other end okay um, whereas okay. if they're just commuters diagrams of sets they could you know like just i don't know send all the morphisms to the same thing or you know or i guess maybe that wouldn't be a functor but um okay yeah. so there's a more complicated diagram of talking about the morphisms inside each of these four categories in this diagram that yeah you could draw okay yeah, you could you could I'm sure express like this condition on on a two of you know what or this definition of a two category in a you know different way, not using these diagrams, but it's a sort of a slick way to, to sort of do it without you know right, okay. spending a long time uh, giving lots of conditions. Um, okay, uh, so I'll, but, I'll stop interrupting and please just say uh, if there's an appropriate time for me to ask questions. Like yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, it's it's fine. Uh, okay, so okay, so just a bit of terminology now. So we call so if we we're talking about like two category C, uh, so we call objects of uh, C, A, B, come on, C, A, B, uh, one morphisms, right? So they're like the the normal morphisms, um, yeah, you know, normal morphisms between objects of the two category. Uh, and we call uh, morphisms in here 
two morphisms in the two category, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, and then following following the source will usually denote uh, objects using using capital letters, uh, one morphisms by by lowercase letters, and two morphisms by by Greek letters, right? Um, and then another note is that usually a two morphism, or at least in this talk, a two morphism, say between object uh, between one morphisms A and B, will denote instead of with a single arrow as usual, will denote with a with a double arrow uh, like this. Right. Um, okay. So now would be a good time for questions if there if there are any. Just as a Yes, I'm still thinking mm -hmm. about the like diagram commuting as a category. Is that the yeah. same as saying uh, you can if you compose those two? Like I'm, I'm still looking at the bottom diagram. If you compose yeah. those two paths and get a functor from top left to bottom right, uh, you mm -hmm. get two different functors. Uh, is it that there's a natural isomorphism between them? Uh, that... no, no. Um, okay. It means they're literally equal as uh, as functors, but like that's sort of getting it getting it where this is going, right? Like maybe you can anticipate that actually asking for these functors to be to be equal might be a bit tricky, right? And that's sort of what the bi category does. The idea of a bi of a bi category does is it means that we don't have such a strong requirement on these diagrams. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So. Maybe before we go on to talk about to, about uh, moving on with bi categories, it might make sense to stay talking about two categories for a bit. Um, so the first thing to sort of to to maybe note is there's kind of two ideas or two notions of of composition of two morphisms in a two category, right? So we can either apply apply the composition functor C A B C right to a pair of two morphisms. Um, or we can compose within uh, the category uh, of of one morphisms, right? So compose as normal, if you like, right? So um, so maybe let's talk about the first case uh, first, right? So so that would be uh, in the following situation, right, where we've got these three objects A, B, and C, right? And we've got morphisms A, oh sorry, F, L, G, and M. And then between these morphisms, or the, between these one morphisms rather, we have some two morphisms, alpha and beta. All right. So in the category uh, C, A, B, cross C, B, C, right, uh, we have objects. Um, F comma L, right, and G comma M, right, and we've also got a, uh, and we've also got a uh, a two morphism or sorry a morphism, um, alpha comma beta, right, and then if we apply the the composition functor to this to this situation. We obtain the following two morphism, right? So, so we get C, A, B, C applied to alpha, beta, right? And then that ends up well applying the the composition functor to this thing just composes these things, um, and same here, right? Um, and that gives us a uh, a functor, sorry, a two morphism uh, between between the composition of these two things. Right. Um, now, at least in the text that I'm working from, this is often called horizontal composition uh, or composition along objects, um, and it's denoted using using a star. All right. Um, now, this is in contrast to so vertical composition or composition along. Morphisms, so that's in the following situation, where we have a pair of objects uh, and morphisms, one morphisms, like so. 
then two morphisms going down like this, right? And then obviously we can we can compose these two morphisms uh, to get a uh, a two morphism from F to uh, H, right? Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, maybe I'll, oops, hang on. Um, <clears throat> so one thing to note maybe, um, or maybe to, to check, I don't think I'll, I'll work through it now, is um, we've got this following, the following relationship between between these two notions of, of composition, right? So if we're in the following situation, Um, right, uh, we have the following equality. Um, and this just follows from from the functoriality of of this composition this composition functor, um, and I think it'll well it'll be worked out in my notes, and I think it will probably also be worked out in the in the textbook. Um, cool. Are there any are there any questions before we before we move on? Did you repeat the uh, you defined beta star alpha equal to something? Could you repeat? The definition of that. Oh, sorry. So this is the the composition functor C A B C uh -huh. applied to the object alpha beta, right? So the the pair of two morphisms alpha beta. So right. So that's composition in the in the C A B category. No. So this is this is composition. Uh, this is so. This is the composition functor which we, which is part of the data of the, the two categories. Oh right. right, you're not applying it to the objects of that category. You're applying it to the morphisms in the yep. category. Yeah, yeah. So sorry. Yeah, when we apply that functor to the morphisms of the category, uh, yeah, we get. I guess. I mean, at least Bourseau calls it another notion of composition. Um, yeah, I don't know. Look, there's a lot of layers to this. I don't know. If you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you can go to three categories and. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I think I'm okay. Fine. Cool. Okay. So, well, let's skip over to the to the third board because we need to keep these diagrams around. Um, and uh, I think we're going to need to get rid of the definition of a two category. <laughs> The stuff on the other board does that come later? Uh, yes, yeah, that diagram might take a while to draw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay, so the prototypical example of a two category is a category in which the objects are categories, the one morphisms are functors, and the two morphisms are natural transformations, right? Um, and a lot of intuition and um, concepts from this setting of this, you know, world of Categories and and uh, functors and natural transformations just transfer naturally into into a two category. So, for example, we can talk about what it means for one morphisms in in a general two category to be adjoint, right? Um, I won't write up that definition because it's just we're just not going to talk about it again. Um, it'll be in my notes and uh, it'll also it's also in the textbook as well as well as several other sort of similar definitions. Um, but it's sort of it's maybe worth keeping that in mind um, sort of you know f for thinking about thinking about these kind of things um, okay so we'll now move on to talk uh, a bit about about by categories right so 
So we're going to use the concept of uh, of a two category in order to define uh, uh, a by category, right? So, so in a two category. Um, consider consider the following diagrams. Well, consider any any diagram of objects and homomorphisms, right? So, for example, this square. Right, and in well, at least in one categories, we often talk about the case where this you know the diagrams that we're interested in commute, right? So, uh, obviously, that means that F composed with G. Uh, is equal to I composed with J, right? Um, now, uh, in a two category, maybe we could indicate that by filling in this this face of this diagram uh, with the identity two morphism, right? So you know these are the same object, so there's the identity two morphism uh, that that exists between them in the category, right? Um, but of course, in a two category, the whole point is that we also have two morphisms which are not the identity, right? So it's natural to consider um, not just diagrams which commute, but also diagrams which can be filled in with two morphisms, right? So say we have now a two morphism alpha uh, from the composition of uh, F and G, come on, um, from the composition of F and G. <coughs> to the composition of J and I, right? Um, and particularly, what are particularly interesting, and if, you know, the only the only circumstance we're gonna be considering uh, when defining bi categories are diagrams in which we fill in the faces with two isomorphisms, right? So <clears throat> say we're in the following setting, right? So suppose we've got a collection of objects together with some candidate one morphisms and some candidate two morphisms. We, and we, we want to define a two category using this data, right? Um, but suppose we can't arrange it or it's, you know, it's very difficult to arrange it, for example, um, that the diagrams, for the diagrams one, two, and three, uh, it's difficult to arrange for them to actually, to actually commute, right? Um, if instead we can fill in these diagrams using uh, natural isomorphisms, which are two morphisms in the category of categories, or a category in which the objects are categories, then this data describes uh, what we call a bicategory, right? So um, I'll write up that definition in detail on the first board now. Um, okay, so definition. Uh, a bicategory I'm also going to call it C, just so the diagrams on the next board make sense. Um, uh, consists of the following data. Uh, so there's a collection of objects. Um, uh, for every pair of objects, uh, category, uh, which we, we think of as being one morphisms between these objects, um, for every object A, uh, we have a functor. which identifies the identity morphism, identity one morphism. Um, and uh, we have a composition functor as well, right? So this is the same, the same kind of idea so far. Okay, and then um, 
for all objects, uh, for all quadruples of objects, A, B, C, and D, we have uh, a natural isomorphism alpha A, B, C, D, right? Which uh, fills in the diagram uh, three, which so I'll move to the to the next board. We might be moving back and forth between these these two boards, um, which fills in uh, the diagram three on this board, right? So we have a natural isomorphism alpha A, B, C, D, right? <clears throat> and we call this natural isomorphism the associator for A, B, C, and D, right? And then um, we've also got uh, got these things called unitors as well, right? And these are exactly the same thing. So we've got um, uh, so we have uh, a natural isomorphism here, which fills in this diagram called the right unitor, uh, and a natural isomorphism here uh, on this diagram. Uh, which is the the left unit up, which we call the left unit up. Okay, um, and this this data, so these these natural isomorphisms, um, this collection of objects, um, and so on, is subject to two more conditions. But before I before I state them, is there any questions on on what we've got so far? Uh, I'm just curious if that uh, natural isomorphism in diagram three, uh, it's between two product categories. Uh, will that like sort of decompose as like two different, like a pair of two isomorphisms, like one from CAC to CAB and one from CCD to CBD? Yeah, okay. So maybe the, the notation isn't clear. So when I'm filling in these, these diagrams with arrows, what I'm meaning is that it's a natural isomorphism um, from the composition of this right, yeah, arm yeah, of the yeah. diagram to the composition of this arm of the diagram. Uh -huh. right? um, so, uh, yeah. I yeah, guess, I, no. I misread that. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, were there any other, any other questions before we move on to state the complicated conditions I can't fully explain? <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's move on to the third board. <clears throat> oh, actually, uh, we can move on to the fourth board. This why I did this this whole thing, All right? Um, so so the data on that first first board is is subject to two conditions, right? So uh, the first is is this one, uh, one, right? So uh, and their conditions. So the conditions about say. So all of this is happening in the category C, A, E, right? We have the following, right? Um, so given these morphisms, we require that this diagram of morphisms in C, A, E, we require that this thing commutes, right? So that's the first coherence condition. And then the second coherence condition is uh, a condition on the morphisms in A, C, right? So obviously this is holding for all objects A and C. Uh, we require that this diagram of morphisms in, C, in A, C, we also require that this thing commutes. Um, <laughs> any, any questions? <laughs> uh, I see that. Let, don't don't let him skate past. Ask him questions. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I don't really have a good way of of motivating these coherence conditions. Um, uh, I think so. We'll go through an example of a two category of a bi category rather, um, and I think it will be sort of clear from that that we probably want these things to be true. Um, I'm not really sure why. I don't understand why they need to be stated as axioms on the bi category rather than things that you can prove about a bi category. Um, I mean, you know, or, or I can't explain why to motivate that. But um, yeah, these are these are what they are. 
Um, wait, so to be clear, the condition is that these two diagrams commute. Yes, sorry. So uh, maybe I can add a little bit of intuition. So the first diagram, roughly speaking, says that if you use the associator to rearrange bracketing, that basically in any diagram you're trying to check commutes, if there's a part of it that consists of rearranging brackets, you don't need to worry about it. I mean, if it's purely rearranging brackets, all diagrams that involve that purely commute. That's, I mean, you can make that a theorem, but that's roughly the content. So it's just like when you when you learn algebra for the first time, you learn that you have a binary operation and you're supposed to multiply things, and in principle there should be brackets everywhere, but you quickly drop them, and you know that's okay. And this makes it similarly okay to do categorical algebra using rearranging of brackets, um, although the sense in which it's okay is more sophisticated and you know doesn't fit in the scope of Rohan's talk. And the, the second point is exactly the same, just when you use uh, when you combine brackets with the, the unitors, uh, you also don't really have to worry about where the brackets are. Um, but yeah, I think I think Rohan's right in wanting to skate past this. This is a, a bit of a subtle point for an introductory talk. This is actually it's actually pretty funny just realizing what it what it's about. Um, I think it actually makes a lot of sense uh, that like it's just the higher level associativity uh like like we have composition as associative but these are sort of ways of rearranging composition and it's just saying that like like i'm imagining like a student performing like rearranging of brackets for their like formal proof theory prop class and it's just saying if they have multiple choices to make in how they rearrange the brackets to get to the end I don't know, I mm. guess that those actions that they do, if they chose them in a different order or something, uh, that the actions themselves are equal or something to like the other path of actions they can take. <clears throat> I don't know, uh, that was a bit clearer in my head. I just wanted to vocalize <laughs> I think I get it. Yeah, I think, I think it was clear. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so everyone happy if we move on to, to an example? Sure. Yeah. I think we should add a feature in Meta Unibili where you can tie a speaker to the board literally until they answer a question <laughs> they're trying to evade. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, everyone has a key and they all have to unlock the <laughs> Um. Okay, so, so we're going to be... Yeah, so here's an example of... Uh, of a by category. Um, so uh, in this by category, objects are going to be rings, uh, not commutative, necessarily commutative. Um, and I guess probably with a unit. Um, uh, the morphisms. Okay, so if we have we have two rings uh, R and and S, right? A morphism from R to S uh, is a so M is a R S bimodule, right? So so this means uh, that M is a left uh, R module, so it's got a, a left multiplication. Um, with elements from R, and it's a right S module, so it's got a right multiplication um, with elements from S, and these two multiplications are compatible in in the way you'd expect, right? Um, okay, uh, so so sorry, they're they're the one morphisms, right? Um, and then. So the category of one morphisms is is the category of bimodules um, of RS bimodules. So maybe let's call that bimod RS, right? And we have a notion of, of morphisms between bimodules, like uh, you know, 
um, you know, they're, they're what they are. Um, and they're going to be the, the two morphisms in, in this uh, by category, right? Okay, so, so for composition, right? So let's talk about composition. Right. So say we're in the following situation. See, and we've got morphism, uh, we've got bimodules, so an A, a B by module X and a uh, B, C by module Y, right? Then we define the composition uh, of X and Y uh, to be the tensor product over the middle ring, right? So the tensor product of X over B with Y, right? Um, okay, uh, and then, so this, so this is the data that forms a back category. I probably also need to tell you uh, what the, the associators uh, and unitors are, but, but actually this is, this is quite clear, right? So, so, um, so if we, if we thinking about, uh, if we're thinking about these, um, these tensor products, right? So say we have, uh, another, let's clean this up a bit. So say we have another, uh, morphism in here as well. All right. Um, we know, right, from, uh, I don't know, our theory of uh, tensor products that uh, we have a natural isomorphism between between these two, two bimodules, right? Right. And in each case, as we vary uh, the rings A, B, uh, C, and D, uh, that's going to be the the associator natural isomorphism in each case, right? Um, oh, I didn't tell you what uh, what uh, the identity is. Well, a uh, over the object R, the oh. identity is R, right? And we also know so R is a R R by module over itself, right? And we know that. R tensored over R with any other module is you just get something that is naturally isomorphic to that module module back, right? Uh, and the same for tensoring on the on the right. Um, and I think using this example, so I guess we haven't gone through it in a huge amount of detail, but using this example, it's sort of it's good to think. Well, if we instead we were trying to define a two category. Like what would have happened here, right? We would have we would have come up with these objects, these morphisms, um, the identity, and this idea about composition. But somehow we needed we would have needed to arrange for these these two tensor products at the end to actually be to be equal rather than naturally isomorphic. Naturally isomorphic, um, and uh, that seems really difficult and dependent on exactly how you how you define tensor products. Um, so. Instead, you know, the trade-off that we get for having these sort of complicated um, and long coherence conditions is that it's sort of actually coming up with bicategories is is a bit easier. Um, are there any questions on on this example? Can you briefly describe the tensor product of two modules? Um, sure. Uh, let's go to um maybe let's get rid of the coherence conditions unless anyone wants could, to talk about them again because i don't want to draw them up again you could throw out a personal board if you wanted i don't know dan do you think that's a good idea yeah as long as it's in front of the yeah why not orb, i guess just stick it up here the, the orb will see it Maybe a bit more closer to the board. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, I'll just see it with my character, so it's okay. Yeah, there's oh, one. Okay. There's one. Yeah. Nope, it's disappeared. And just press the. Oh. Hmm. What's going on? You can write on mine. Oh, you got yours. Nope. Mm. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. Um, 
So maybe the most common of, of thinking about the tensor product is so um, two. modules A and B. Oh, no, 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 hang on. <laughs> um, so say R module. and B, this tensor product here. E, uh, group on the Cartesian product, right? So, so what that means is we take all pairs of, um, all pairs where the first thing in the pair is an element from A and the second thing in the pair is an element from from B, um, and we we add them in, in a formal sense, right? So we construct all 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 sums of these these objects, right? Um, and then we're going to mod this out by by an equivalence relation. Oh, sorry, by uh, by certain equations, right? Um, and these equations essentially amount to the fact that addition uh, and multiplication will be bilinear, right? Um, so we want, uh, for example, a one plus a oops, uh, plus a two comma b. We want that to be equal to a one b plus a two b. Um, uh, we want uh, the same thing on the on the right. So we want a b1 plus b2 to be equal to a b1 plus a b2. Um, and oh, and we want uh, we want scalar multiplication to also to also work nicely with this, right? So we want r a b. So we're r. Oh, oh hold on. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Um, yeah. Sure. So we want we want to be able to move move multiplication by r between between these things. So uh, an object of A with r acting on the right is the same thing as. Oh, let me finish writing that. Um, is the same thing as just moving that r to the other side and having it act on the left by B. Um, is that everything? <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, cool. Um, and we take the, the abelian group generated by those relations. Um, so as A, A1, A2, B, and A and B and B1 and B2 vary over every single element in these things. Um, and we define that to be uh, the tensor product A tensor R B. And then when you see someone write an element of this tensor product, say, usually they'll write it as like little a tensor b. What that means is they're talking about the pair a, b, right, a comma b. Um, were there any questions about that? Wait, they're referring to that element, but all like the equivalence class of that element. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the equivalence class of that element. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, were there any other any other questions? Um, so. I think like. Oh, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you have more you wanted to present, or is this the 
end of talk question time. Uh, I suppose maybe the only thing I would I would comment on is um, like if you, I mean, it seems like you've got a sort of an intuition for it, uh, Billy. But if you look at the coherence conditions in in this example, right, I think it's even more clear, right? So these things are, so these compositions here. Sorry, what board are you writing on? Oh, sorry, I'm on the on the board we're standing in in front of the um, the big the, one, the big one, yeah. Um, so if we're looking at these coherence conditions again, so these compositions are now tensor products. In in this example we're working through this this bi mod bi category, um, these are all tensor products of of modules, right? Um, and you can sort of see, right? You know, obviously these things are going to be true, true in this case, right? And it's sort Wait, of the, the nodes of these diagrams are yeah are tensors of modules. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So this this thing is a tensor product of modules, and and same for each other vertex. Um, and like obviously, this this will be true in this case, right? You can rearrange the brackets in a in a tensor product in you know a series of tensor products of modules, and we'd really sort of want this to be true in at least in you know in this example um so yeah i suppose maybe that was all i all i had to say more uh on that why are there so many why, why is it uh four things here like uh like with associativity i just think about like uh like three different objects and the two ways that you can bracket them but there's four objects here yeah i suppose when you have three objects there's only one way to rearrange the brackets and that's but... that's data that's not a condition that's the associator so the associator says you can rearrange it it's an isomorphism of the two ways of bracketing and then the point is okay there's a coherence condition here for four things but you could also have bigger diagrams for five things, for six things, for seven things, but everything you want follows from the one for four things. So really what it's saying is that uh, as soon as you bracket more than three things, all possible ways of doing it amount to the same thing. Right, and just to be clear, if there are only three things and there's only one associator you can apply, so there's no diagram to draw? Well, there's an associator and it's inverse, yeah. The inverse is the one that right. yeah. Could, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, uh, in the case of bimodules, it's a good exercise to check that this diagram commutes from the universal properties. Um, because those tensor products in at, at every vertex are some, I mean, it's an object in the category of bimodules which has a universal property with respect to bilinear pairings suitably defined from some Cartesian product. And you can unravel it to see that what you're talking about is a universal multilinear form on four, a Cartesian product of four things and uh, five different ways of realizing that universal bilinear form. And that's mm. what this diagram is talking about. But it's it's kind of it's trivial to check because I mean, what this diagram amounts to if you expand it in the notation that Rohan just explained is something like uh, well it's a bit hard to choose right the right letters but uh, so it'd be like X and then a, like an element in the top left would be something like X tensor Y tensor Z I'm on my mouse so forgive me uh, tensor, of course, after Z comes U. <laughs> um, and then you'd rearrange the brackets on that as you go around the diagram, but of course you get to the same thing in the end. It's, it's just the two different, way, two different ways of rearranging bracketing in the tensor. Um, it's not very instructive. Mm. It doesn't really give you a feeling for what the true content is, but the true content lies in understanding this in terms of the original construction of the tensor products involved. So that's uh, one way to see that it's not completely sort of tautological or that there's some, uh, to see what it's saying. Uh -huh.
Can I ask about the the left and right modules thing? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe I missed it, but uh, like you define the module as an as a function from R to S, was it? Um, like a, a module. Oh, and it, yeah, so it's a morphism in this in this by category example on on the second last board. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, this is where we yeah. are over here. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, so it's it's just a it's just a morphism, an arrow from from R to S. Um, so it doesn't make sense as a you know, it doesn't do anything to elements of of R, but it it still defines a, a by category um, when we think about them as morphisms. Okay, so you can multiply on the left by R by like left multiplication on the input or something. No, it's uh, there's no input. Wait, it's, no. Yeah, it's it's an abstract definition. So there's no there's no functions involved. It's just given a module which has a left action by R and a right action by S. So for example, you could take R and S to both be Z and M to be an abelian group. Then any abelian group is a module over Z. You act by an integer by just adding up an element of your module that many times. That's because the ring is commutative, that's both a left and a right module structure. That makes M, an abelian group, a bimodule over ZZ. So any abelian group would be an arrow, not a function, it's just like a formal counted as an arrow from Z to Z in this bi category. But there's no there's no inputs or outputs. Does that make sense? Oh right, okay. So there's nothing on okay. There's nothing on this page to like remind me of what a morph is, what a left, or what a module is, a bimodule between R and R. It's yeah. It's just this is what a morphism means between R and S. It's a bimodule, and that yeah. might look like something else. Yeah. So if you if you're not if anyone's not familiar with or you know doesn't remember what a module is, just think about R and S as being as being fields, and then and then M is just a vector space. Um, over R and S. Yeah. Cool. That's all the questions I had. Thanks, Ron. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, Ron. I guess we'll um, we'll leave it there. Cool. Sounds good. Cheers. Um, I'll catch you next week. See ya. See you guys later. Yep. See ya.